This year, the Ministers of Government of St. Kitts and Nevis assembled together to bring you their independence messages from the Cabinet Room and Government Headquarters. They built on the theme, A Nation on the Move, Celebrating All Progress, among other subjects. Lend us your ears as our Ministers of Government bring you independence meetings. My Cabinet colleagues, I'm very pleased to be able to share with our nation my insights about the state and status of our Federation as we celebrate our 31st anniversary of independence and I do so on this 8th day of September in our cabinet chamber. First of all, we should all be very grateful to be able to say what many nations today cannot and that is St. Kitts and Nevis is a stable, well-managed, economically sound member of the world community of nations. Our nation, it is respected far and wide, as is quite evident in the Commonwealth requesting that we lead their international effort to impress upon the world's leading financial institutions the objectives, perspectives, and insights of small states where matters financial and economic are concerned. We are told that we were asked to assume this leadership role because of the level of skill and responsibility that we demonstrated in the management of the St. Kitts Nevis economy during the global economic crisis and because of our outstanding results in the reduction and the management of the nation's debt. In addition, nations from Asia, Europe, Latin America, and the Caribbean very recently voted for St. Kitts and Nevis to head the Board of Governors of the Caribbean Development Bank. That which, through its funding decisions, has such a tremendous impact on the social and economic direction of CARICOM member states. As you know, my fellow cabinet colleagues, our federation has had a series of unbroken, consistently strong assessments by the International Monetary Fund. And that institution and other international financial institutions project continued upward growth as a result of our government's policies in particular. Our own debt, it is down. The government no longer uses overdraft facilities. The Federation's accounts reflect surpluses. And we are using the resources of our country to invest quite heavily in the people, especially the young people of this Federation, through skills training, social services, expanded land resources for our farmers, through the securing of loans and scholarships for university studies, through the provision of instruction, mentorship, and funding for small businessmen and women, and through the provision of low-cost financing for first-time home owners. Your government first used the financial resources of our country to underwrite a major expansion of our country's infrastructure. And then we used our very strong management skills to dramatically, dramatically reduce the debt that made those infrastructural advances possible. Our country leads the Eastern Caribbean in foreign direct investment. We lead the region in economic growth. And with the exception of specific and heartbreaking individual cases, crime has been reduced dramatically, and the nation can, in fact, feel it. We in St. Kitts and Nevis, has, we have freedom of speech. We have freedom of assembly. We have freedom of religion. And members of our cabinet, our 31st anniversary finds us focused, focused on the hard work 
that is required to move a progressive nation forward. We are respected, respected by nations large and small. We are stable and we are secure. We live in a country where our governments are chosen by the people in democratic means. Not every country can make these vast and varied claims. For all this and more, we should all be truly grateful, not only as members of this federal cabinet, but as proud citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis. I want to thank you, and I want to wish our entire nation a blessed 31st Independence Anniversary as we celebrate, celebrate what we have achieved as we look forward into a future that is brighter for all of us. Members of Cabinet, thank you again for this opportunity. As we celebrate our 31st anniversary of independence, I first of all want to congratulate the government and people of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. We are celebrating this year under the theme, A Nation on the Move, celebrating our progress. We are definitely celebrating our progress over the last 31 years. We have seen development of the Federation in all areas. More specifically, I look at my own ministry in the area of housing. We have seen a government that has constructed thousands of houses over the last couple of years. The distribution of homes to our people all around the island in every single community has been touched. And uh, we have all seen the infrastructure development in the Federation over the last years. In every community, we have seen the improvement in our telecommunication system. We have seen improvement in our distribution of electricity within the various communities, reliable supply of that. We have also seen our road network and improvement in our road ne network in St. Kitts. And as, the con as our country continues to grow, we'll definitely see more improvement in these specific areas. So once again, I would like to congratulate the government and the people of the Federation for the tremendous work that we are doing thus far as we celebrate our 31st anniversary of independence. I am happy to share my thoughts on independence and its significance to me as son of the soil and leader in the affairs of the nation state. Independence reminds me that what we do as a government and as a people is not primarily geared or focused on the citizen as a voter with divided allegiance. Rather, we celebrate the ties that bind us together as a nation under God. Because of that, I am reminded that each day I am a statesman before I am a politician. My plans and implementation strategies are shaped by the national ideals of hope and liberty. I am forever mindful that I am a steward of public trust that is passed on to the youth who must be empowered today. Independence and nationhood in this technologically advanced age have taught me that citizens of the seemingly small nation in population and size have the potential to stand tall among the nations while having equal access to first world opportunities. Gone are the days when with the celebration of independence was just freedom from colonial rule, but rather for us to do what is best for us as a people. After 31 years of sovereignty, we have recognized that political independence is a daily struggle to strengthen the capacity of our people to become global citizens. That is why I praise the vision of the leadership of the government, of which I am a proud member of. I am happy to lead the sport and technological advancement of the country so that St. Kitts and Nevis may be seen as a center of excellence. Independence has motivated, has motivated me to embrace the 25 Most Remarkable Teens Award program 
as a means of showcasing empowered teens who all possesses the will and ability to lift our nation higher. In the area of sports, youth empowerment, information, telecommunication, and posts, St. Kitts and Nevis is a nation on the move. The significant strides that we have made are in and of themselves commendable. However, independence says to me, as a son of a fertile land, there is much more work to be done. And so, while I contemplate on the significance of independence, I must at the same time recommit myself to the service of the people. I recommit myself, energies and focus to formulating and implementing sport, youth and technological policies and programs that would inspire our people to greatness. I therefore commit to convert the strides in app development training into an economically viable app creation technology sector of our economy. I commit to achieving greater economic benefits for the nation through the ideal usage of our world-class sporting facilities. I also commit to the development of more meaningful youth programs that would inspire and empower our young people to excellence. And so, I end with the words penned by local music educator, Ms. Pamela Ward, words that must be found on the lips of all re residents and citizens of a nation that is on the move. And I quote, O beautiful twin islands, combine the new and old. The sun and the moon and stars are ours to have and to hold in the council of great nations Though small, we have a place. We will strive to work and live together in God's fulfilling grace. So let it be. I thank you. Chairman and other cabinet colleagues, as we celebrate our 31st anniversary of our independence, and as we reflect on where we were 31 years ago, and where we are today. I can say that I am pleased with the progress that we have made in health, in the empowerment of our women and our efforts at gender equality, at the reduction in poverty and the improvement in the delivery of our social services, the development of our communities as we strive to bring back community spirit throughout the entire country and the promotion of our cultural industries. For example, in health, we will, during this or Independence Month, see the launching of our hospital information system at the Joseph N. France General Hospital, which will greatly improve our delivery of quality health care. This will involve an identification card which will be given to every person who accesses our health care system. <coughs> we also expect to see a submission to Cabinet to finalize the implementation of our national health scheme. As we celebrate 31 years, we believe that health underpins all of the development of our country. And that is why we are very pleased that shortly we will see the implementation of the first phase of our national health insurance scheme. I wish to end by thanking all of our, my constituents in Central Bastia for giving me the opportunity to serve our country in this way. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart. And I would want to wish every citizen of St. Kitts and Nevis a happy 31st independence as we celebrate our nation's progress. Right, Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Denzel Douglas, Chairman of the Cabinet of Ministers, Deputy Prime Minister, Dr. the Honorable Earl Asim Martin, other Cabinet colleagues, Mr. Joseph Edmead, Cabinet Secretary, 
Good evening to all of you. Let me say how pleased I am to be here and to have been given the opportunity, firstly, to serve in this cabinet as we celebrate the 31st anniversary of our nation's independence, and secondly, to thank each and every one of you for the support that you have given me personally as you have charged me with carrying out the programs of the government for education and for agriculture over these last few years. I think you would recall, Cabinet colleagues, that in recent years we've had many challenges but also many successes in both the fields of education and agriculture. Firstly, when we came to government in 2010, we were confronted with the challenge of improving the infrastructure of our schools because for quite a number of years, it would appear, very little attention had been paid to them. And we found ourselves in recent years, through your support, in particular your support, Prime Minister, Minister of Health, Minister Liburd, and Minister of Public Works, Dr. Earl Asim Martin, dealing effectively with a program of upgrade of our school's infrastructure. And so over the last three to four years, we have touched each and every one of our schools, seeking to put them in a position of first world schools and first world infrastructure. And I think that the nation as a whole is very grateful for what we've been able to do. But very often, they don't see the work that happens in this cabinet and how we pour over the challenges that confront us as we seek to serve them as citizens and residents of our great country. We also attempted to deal with the issue of getting our young men and women upskilled. Um, we thought it was critically important, given the nature of the environment in which we live, the opportunities which are beginning to abound, that it was critically important that our young people be given the skills to find themselves, to find a place for themselves in our society. And so we focused on technical and vocational education and training. And I recall at this cabinet meeting when we made those serious decisions to provide the financial support to get our programs in our secondary schools at AVEC and at the CFBC on the way. And I think that that has paid dividends. We have seen many young people leaving schools with skills that put them in good stead for positions in the world of work. And then, I believe, Prime Minister, colleagues, we have focused a lot of effort on getting our young people pursue post-secondary education, tertiary-level education. And it was in this same cabinet that we have gotten the support in the Ministry of Education to expand scholarship opportunities through universities in Taiwan, Monroe University, University of the Virgin Islands, um, to get our young people off to study and to benefit from these kinds of opportunities. And so over the last four years, we have been able to expand the number of persons obtaining full scholarships um, by over 50%, and in some cases, 100%, so that today we really are on our way to achieving first world standards with respect to the proportion of our young people who would have attained tertiary level education. To support that, we thought it was important as well to catalyze improved enrollment or continuing of education beyond secondary school into the CFBC and other post-secondary institutions such as AVEC. And recently we launched the REACH program. It was through your support that we were first able to conceive of such a project and secondly, to get the re requisite financial support to implement that program. And that program provides financial support for young people moving out of secondary school and into a post-secondary institutions in both Nevis and St. Kitts. And what we expect to see in the next three, four, five years is a much larger number of persons enrolling into these institutions, and not only enrolling in these institutions, but pursuing higher education, moving into tertiary level education 
into university level, edu uh, university level education. This we see as being critically important. And lastly, in relation to education colleagues, you will recall that as of 2010, we embarked upon the one-to-one -one laptop project. This was very strongly supported by my colleague, Minister, Minister of Technology, Glenn Phillip, as well as other cabinet colleagues, including the Minister of Finance, who provided the necessary financial resources to make that program possible. What we intend to achieve through that program is a greater empowerment of our young people to engage in research and therefore bridge the gaps that have heretofore existed in relation to the ability to acquire um, new information, new knowledge to pursue their own goals and objectives as young professionals in St. Kitts and Nevis. And so insofar as education, we believe that it is critically important for sustainable development that we equip our young people with the skills and therefore provide them the technology and opportunities to pursue higher level education. In relation to agriculture, I believe, Prime Minister and colleagues, you would agree that in this cabinet we have begun to think that as a small island developing state with very limited resources, land and people and other resources, it is critically important that we begin to put technology into the area of farming. And so we have been able to get the requisite support at this cabinet to approach the SIDF for funding to build greenhouses um, so that we can improve productivity. And to date, we have established about 30 of these greenhouses throughout the Federation. And that is going to have a very important impact upon our ability to feed ourselves. It impacts upon our food security. And I think it improves the opportunities for us to make linkages with the tourism and other sectors. And so I was very pleased when I was able to sit with Mr. Jacques Hamou, the uh, manager of the Marriott Hotel, just last week with a group of farmers and having received commitment from him to accept the produce as we work to improve our standards and empower young farmers. We are of the view that agriculture is again a way for the future of our young people. We are proud of the young people who are investing their time and effort in farming and we want to show them that the support will continue as we seek to provide them inputs of animal feed and fertilizer and other things to ensure that the farming can be viable and well supported. We have been investing in the establishment of a soil and pesticides analysis lab and center and we have recruited young people who have just returned from university for them to um, staff that important and critical unit. And so from this outpost, we, we, we believe that we'll be able to make more productive decisions about what we invest in agriculture in terms of the fertilizers that need to be applied to get the outputs from the crops that we plant. And I think the farmers are very much in support of this. And lastly, colleagues, I want to thank you because we have worked over the last few years to establish a new vision for agriculture. We believe that agriculture is, again, a sector of the economy, a sector of the sinks and needs economy, which can indeed be viable and provide a way of life and wealth for the people of sinks and Nevis. So I want to thank you, Cabinet colleagues. Um, I want to wish you all the very best. I, I expect that um, for this season and uh, beyond, you are going to be reaching out to your respective constituencies um, and basically indicating to them how we have worked in their interest. And I've been very proud to support all of you in your endeavor to serve the people of the country. Thank you so very much. At this time of year, independence reminds us that we all have a role to play in the development of our beautiful Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. We hope that our ministers have inspired you to do just that. SKNIS takes this opportunity to wish you all a happy independence 2014.